let's go back, okay? Because okay. everybody knows Cleo for, as Zero from Holes, another co-star propping up our boy Shia. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, side note here, let's just like talk about the elephant in the room, but not to full detail here. For sure. But like, I, are you in touch with Shia? I'm not. I've, I'm I've, not. I've done a whole YouTube video about it. When was the last time you saw him? The last time I saw Shia was at the premiere of, I want to say it was the golf movie that he did. Yes! Oh my God! That me, one of, I think that might have been, if not the last time I saw him. Yeah. One of the last, for sure. I think, I think I saw him a... out at a club. I think I saw him out at a club at one point. <laughs> When I was, was doing weird. when I was doing uh, Walking Tall in Vancouver, he was uh -huh. shooting I Robot uh, with Will. Then, so we okay. you know we had did holes, then we were, we both ended up in Vancouver, so we hung out that summer. And then okay. I was shooting ER, and he we were both on the same Warner Brothers lot. He was down two studios shooting Constantine. So like three oh, projects wow. back to back, we were running into each other mid work. And then the last time I think I saw him was at the premiere. Yeah. So did you see? Because like honestly, from Holes to I Constantine. I feel like I could still see very much like Shia to me, who Shia was, yeah. and that Shia 1.0 kind of like still using his humor and his charm and like all that stuff. He wasn't quite like the artiste Shia that everybody kind of knows him as, which by the way, he really is very artistic. Yeah. Um, and I never would have thought that would have been the road he would have gone down. You know what I mean? Like, I could definitely see him being the leading man, but like the how far into the drama he's gone, like I never would have thought. Yeah. That was him. But like when you saw him from the time you worked with him in Holes to I Constantine, what was that? I am just curious and we don't have to keep going into it. But No, for sure. For for me what like working with Shia, I, I was nothing but a sponge. I you know, we share so many mm -hmm. scenes together. Until this day, you know, you look at the relationship between Stanley O. Nets and Hector Zeroni, like people love that friendship and that dynamic duo mm -hmm. aspect of it. So yeah. for it to be my first major motion picture film and to be alongside him, which is, you know, he he was at a point where they were getting ready to put the jet pack on them. You know what I mean? Like from there, it was it was like, all right, we got this deal and this deal and this thing next. Like it was already yeah. lined up for him to go. And that, yeah, I think yeah. that's a lot of people who, you know, people who don't know our business or our game, they don't understand that. Like a lot of this stuff is very plotted out very thoroughly. Oh. And, um, and, uh, it was and let's just talk about the fact that there are people who have things plotted out for them. Okay. Yes. And then there's people who don't get that privilege. Oh, yes, <laughs> exactly. And now this is this is not to insult him because it was life or death for him for sure. Yeah. I mean, he felt that way. It was, and it, it was his calling from, it was his birthright to be famous, really. Yeah. Um, or infamous, I don't know what you want to call it, but like he's out there and he's doing his thing. Right. Um, now, I feel like there's a lot of talented people out there as well, but they don't get that management, that agenting, that, that prop up. I mean, can you speak to that in terms of like how you then went and took that moment of saying, well, no one's going to do it for me. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to start investing in myself. What was that like? It was, for me, it was understanding that no matter what I did in that room, as far as auditioning for a role, there was always going to be multiple variables to whether I would get the role or not. I was never like offered anything ever straight out. I always had to audition. So when I got right. to the, when I got to the place of understanding really my our business, what goes into it, and understanding I could go in there and give a hundred percent of myself, which I'm gonna do every single time. I'm a professional. I'm gonna be here for it. But there's so many variables going on on the other side of that door. So True. I wanted to take the time and figure out how I could take more control and be in power for myself. What. Mm -hmm. What could Cleo Thomas make of himself in this world? Not with someone giving me the prop up or the jet pack or opening the door. I've already had the spotlight, so I'm just going to use and take advantage of the spotlight I've been given and continue to build from there. And it's been a really incredible journey for myself, man. I, I, I'll tip my hat to myself because I can look at some yeah. of my peers who have not been able to cross that bridge yet. They're figuring it out. But it was yeah. something for me. I was like, I'm not going to sit around and starve. I'm sorry. I can't sit around waiting for the next audition to book a role. I can't. I gotta get to Yo, it. Yo, Cleo, I wanna talk about that more because it, it, I've only just at, and by the way, I'm 38. Like, let's be real. I'm on the other side of what it means to be female and in this industry, right. which is fine. Okay, I'm okay with it. I'm also like getting into that like mindset of like they're like what you, where you've been at for a while. Um, I'm also, I have the privilege of uh, having a producing partner 
Let me let me let me say that again because I just stumbled and I'm still drinking caffeinated water. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mom life. We'll cut this out. Um, I also have the privilege of having a producing partner mm -hmm. who happens to be my husband. So what that means for me, right, is that I don't get commissions taken out of my team. Mm. I have everything coming in and it's still mom and pop, right? But yeah. like, there's a reason why it's mom and pop. It's because I'm not hemorrhaging money because I'm, I'm, I'm delegating responsibilities to other people. It's like all family yeah. and it's all love that way. But like, but yeah, um, I was 38 when I realized that this wasn't gonna happen unless I figured out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and I had somebody to help me. Yeah. So when I look at people like yourself, I mean, who inspired you to, 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 to just do this? And like, was it the music that started you on your own path? You know, it wasn't the music, you know, because I had a I had a very interesting journey with music, you know, for okay. for for me to break out have my breakout role also be tied to the the song that, you know, helped promote the film. People were introduced yeah. to Cleo Thomas Zero as not only the actor, but also an, a rapper, an artist. So yeah. I go do Roll Bounce after that and Roll and Bow right. takes me underneath his wing. Which, by the way, great movie. If you haven't seen Roll Bounce, I actually really want to see it. I haven't seen it in a minute. I think I actually went to the I want to say that I went to a screening of it or something yeah, and I was man. I was I love that movie that was a fun awesome movie and by the way Bow Wow was great like he he should have been given more roles and that's another thing like yo it's a part of our run <laughs> but so, like the cast of Roll Bounce is so legendary stacked like it's considered yeah. a black Hollywood classic film just because of the cast it should be and yes. then Bow for sure and I'll always tip my hat to him because he showed out they would have never thought that young, you know, young black man to be a rapper and, get, and have such an intention, a intense emotional scene with his father. I'll never yes. forget being at that premiere and it got to that part and I and I hear it. I hear the sobs. I hear the, I can hear the breathing. I'm like, oh, this hit. He did it. He he did a hell of a performance. And you know, Bowers right. continues. You know, he went on to be a part of the Fast and Furious franchise. Of course, he right. had the. Uh, I think he, the, there was a CSI with Patricia Arquette, who was also Fine. in Holes. So I was like, oh, dope connection. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. So it's been it's, you know for that for music for me for Bow to take me underneath his wing. Great. And then right. I worked with Soldier Boy as well, and I worked with Sean Kingston as well. So I was I was always around hip hop and you know right. figuring out how to make my own way. And then I finally took control of it, and I did. And then I realized there's more gatekeepers and so much more politics to the music industry than there is even to what we've already dealt with when I was 13 to 16. Yo, I was like, no it's way. dirty. <laughs> it is so dirty. I made a whole YouTube walk and talk vlog about this, okay? You can see it about Katy Perry. People got heated when yeah. I did this vlog, okay? I did this vlog about how like Katy Perry took my record deal. Now, did I mean that? No, I didn't mean she took what was mine. Yeah. She obviously is an amazing, epically talented human being who deserves a record deal. And she was in the demo business. Like she was with The Matrix and she was writing songs and she was just a demo singer and she was struggling. Like she was ready to go. Yeah. I just happened to be like, you know how they only have so many deals that they can give out at a certain point in time. And so I just happened to be the, the, the female act that was alongside or in the running of that situation. That's why it was topical for me to talk like that. But let me tell you, the rest of that vlog was dogging how bad my experience was with the men in the industry yeah. and how they were hitting on me and how putting me in really weird situations and conversations during, you know, like business chats. And so I can only imagine that it might not have been that for you, mm -hmm. but it was probably another version of like, gray professionalism for sure I mean, how is it for sure for me i was just constantly belittled i was constantly like oh you want to be the the actor turned rapper you want you're trying to be the actor turned rapper but meanwhile i was actually doing it but the yeah, business like, had the, the business hadn't caught up yet like I, I remember going to houston one time i went to a radio station down there and fans showed up at the radio station now I'm understanding how important that is. That's a very valid thing for me to walk in here, meet you, meet the radio PD for the first time. Right. Pleasure to meet you as the single. I did the whole radio run, you know, independently. I did it all. And turns out they did not like that. They felt that that was a little off. And that was like, ah, you know, we just seem like it doesn't, you know, we're, we're not really interested in someone having fans at that scale to push their record. If you got it like that, you got it. They shrugged me off. And I was like, that seems kind of backwards, don't it? Wouldn't you yes. want to, so, and, yes. and that's just one instance of what I've had to deal with, but you yes. know, it's a part of our game. 
No, and ga so gatekeepers are people in the entertainment industry that essentially could, I guess they could choose to make your career, I guess. Like, I, I almost want to kind of unpack yeah. what a gatekeeper is. Because to me, the face of the gatekeeper for me is casting directors. Mm -hmm. Like, I have, I, have some, I have some issues now that I probably should talk to people about with casting directors, because I actually really like the people that I've met. I have lots of friends who are casting directors. I've had really good experiences outside of the audition process right. with casting people. People, because they are people. They're people. But when they become the casting person is when I have a problem and I have a really hard time sort of like embracing what it is they have to do. Yeah. And so like I get it, but I don't like it. Like, I, I got to be honest, it feels almost like human trafficking for, to me sometimes. Because mm. it's like, well, this person, that person, I don't care about the person. Just it show up for me and do my job and make it easy. And that's like that what they say in like casting workshops. It's like, uh, you know, I, yeah, I want to make a pleasant experience for the actors. But really, I just want to find the right person. So come in and make my job easy. Right. Have you, have you heard that too? Like, where it's like, that's what they want? I, I haven't heard that before, but I could understand the, the mindset of a casting director having, you know, there's casting directors who've been doing this for years. I How know. many scenes have they heard? And <laughs> thousands, thousands of How many of same actors. deliveries of a role? Like, it's, and that's, that's the other aspect of, of, you know, our business where it's like a variable. Yeah. There's another variable yeah. there that somehow, like, it's not about your performance at all times. It's really not. It's sometimes no. it's like, hey, this is the motive that we're talking about this week. This is the agenda that's getting pushed at this time. This is the right. look that's going for right now. There's that's so right. many, hey, me and so-and-so did a project back in the day and it's time for me to look at. You have no yeah. idea about that walking in the room and you I shouldn't. You. But it's, it's unfair for me not to give that to the world so that you know the next actor, the next actress can be aware. Don't let it, don't let it hinder you, but just be aware it's not you. All you can Aww, do is go in there and like shoot. Cleo, you're the best. You're hype. You're making me feel so good about that process because it was a little traumatizing. I guess I have a little trauma from it. I get it. I'll, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. And like, I love to hear you talk like that because you're doing all the things. Okay. So obviously like you had this amazing like journey with music. Did you fall out of love with it? Like, did you decide with the gatekeepers? You're like, I'm, you said you wanted to just be independent at a certain point. What was that like? Yeah. I, I just bet on myself. I just got tired of the the runarounds. I got tired of the uh, broken promises as far and then dealing okay. with producers and all this. I was like, that's it. And I had yeah. looked at the internet and I realized what was coming. After the success of what Soldier Boy was able to do with YouTube, I'm like, okay, things have changed. What the, year was this? Oh, 2000, uh, 2009 through 2000. Okay. When I when I really put, went all the way in, it's 2009, 2010. And okay. you know, from and there, you weren't acting. You weren't acting anymore, Cleo. No, I was still acting. Like... I was I was doing okay. both. I was doing both. Okay. Um, and I had the opportunity to you know drop a mixtape. It did a million downloads in the first month, which you know caught Soldier Boy's attention, and he was like, "Yo, come over and rock with me for a minute." And I did. We had right. a great run. Uh, ultimately, that wasn't gonna. That I didn't appreciate. I didn't like the the dynamic of that. So I just said, "All right, all me. Let's go." And I figured it out. You know, we was able to bring two great records out, like Ride and Five on it. And those records put me in a position to where I could feel the success in the newer age of music. Because back in the day, it was about, you know, the platinum records and the radio smashes. And that's all great. Every artist wants that. You kind of, or so they said they wanted, but now there's so many artists talking about, like, these platinum plaques ain't worth nothing because I ain't get, because they deals was crazy. But that's a whole other thing on the back <laughs> on the other day. Uh, yeah. I, got the, I got the opportunity to tour, which is all I ever really wanted. Because when I okay. saw, when I got a chance to be shoulder to shoulder with Bow and Scream Tour, and we're in arenas, and there's 32,000 people screaming your name and having that energy, I'm like, right. how do I replicate that? So when I put out my records, and I got a chance to tour, and I heard Five on it, and Ride, those lyrics scream back to me, I was like, I'm good. I accomplished it. That's all I needed. Now I can go back and figure out whatever my next step is in life to do. Man, not bad for a guy from Alaska. Yeah, Anchorage, Alaska, man. One of the, one of the very few. <laughs> one of the very how few. the heck... How the heck did you get out of, of Alaska? Was it like, did what was that like growing up in Alaska? So it's, I wasn't there long. My my dad okay. was in the military and okay. uh, you know, I'm a military brat. So I was, I think I, I think we ended up leaving when I was like one or two and then we ended up in Germany. Okay. And then my brother was oh. born there. And then at, after Germany, we back to the States and then my dad said, I'm done with the military. And then we just, uh -huh. that was it. 
That was it. Yeah, so I haven't been home. I I haven't been home. People from Alaska tweet me all the time, like, you got to come. I'm like, I got to come visit the home at least once. (laughs) One one is very young, but you know, it would be cool. It would be cool to see you perform in Alaska. I'm not. Nah, no more performances. No more microphones. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Hold on. I hung that up. I hung that up. I'm telling you. Wait, and can we? And speaking of performing and hip hop and chains, can we talk about your chain right now? Yeah. Leo has graciously worn this amazing chain in my honor. It has, I can see Draken, KP, Shigo, yeah. and Ron. I'm what? Sure oh my gosh, guys, this is an amazing chain. Yeah. Where'd so, you get that, Cleo? So uh, there is a jewelry designer named Christopher Kites, good friend of mine, and he's been making all of this great jewelry for years. He's from Chicago. And he makes releases like every, like they're very rare. Like he's not like always loading up his site. And as soon as uh-huh. I saw that one, I was like, cop. But the, my Wait. goal is to give this to you when I see you. Oh my God, Cleo. Yeah, this Thank has to you. be yours. This is only for my yours. My heart. You yeah. are so sweet. This oh is my for you, gosh. For sure. I'm like, so are you a KP fan then? Uh, come, come on now. Come on. Now. Who's not? <laughs> Who's not a KP fan? Come on. Yes, man. I know. Which, well, Apparently Disney's not a KB fan because we want to get him to reboot it. We got Proud Family got season two now. You Let's know get that's KB coming. Rebooted. You know I that's mean, coming. You, you know, know, but know sometimes, that. but sometimes speaking of gatekeeping and not knowing necessarily like what those fans mean, like what you were talking about outside the studio, it's like our fans have been present. They brought us back for a fourth season and then, you know, they all grew up, right? But then the nostalgia wave started to hit us. Um, all of us like millennials. Are you? You're a millennial, right? Yeah, I'm 32. Yeah. 32. Oh, yeah. Okay. So 32. I'm an elder millennial. So that's why, I, I, for some reason, I think that you have to be like my age to be a millennial. But I'm actually on the older side. <laughs> sure. But, but you know, like these millennials, we started to catch like these feelings about our our upbringings, and and it, and and you know, I I feel like I've seen you kind of lean into that with this amazing cosplay. Yeah. That if you haven't seen him do this, yeah, I haven't seen a better cosplay to be perfectly honest. Like if they ever do some sort of live action goof goofy movie, yeah, you need to be Powerline. You know, it's one of those things where because me, I can speak to you because we know our business, right? <laughs> we know our business, so we know yeah. that. If there was ever a live action one, uh, I'm not getting that call because I feel I feel personally what I did was just to, like they're like nah nah we're we're gonna have to now top that we can't have the same guy come and do it over here we'll just that's top good that. source material that's Bingo. source material uh-huh. that's exactly how it goes but it's so crazy to think it's like you know the people who are just um the people who just uh get a chance to view what we create right, right just the person right. who's just watching or just listening. They have no idea about those things. So, like, in their brains, they're like, oh, no, that's Powerline. When they do the Goofy movie, he's Powerline. Right. Nah, that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how the industry works. (laughs) That's not how it works. Oh, my God. It's so true, man. So, why make content at all, then? Because... Because I'm, I get the chance to be creative and free at all times. I don't have to, again, coming from my childhood, just like you, I had to wait my turn to be told an action and cut that's all that 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 was all my childhood and then when i realized i don't have to wait on anybody to feel creative feel empowered give something to the world do something cool that i've always wanted to do i'm all the way in and i've loved it man i've had the opportunity to do some really great stuff and i'm really excited for the future these things we got planned and uh yeah that's why because i love doing it Okay, so then what what do you have planned? I mean, we're moving all over the place and usually we t- we head that towards the end. Yeah. So I don't know if if I if I need to I'm a little bit all over the place. All good. Um I'm trying to think about going back to um Hold on ho- hold on for me one second. No problem. Okay? I promise you we're going to edit it all. All good, no problem. Um Yeah, I mean there's you got Slick Living mm-hmm. and your clothing brand. Mm-hmm. Glam the Future's Goddess, which I really want. I want some. I want some swag. Please send me some stuff. On the way. Oh, thank you. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on one sec. No problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So we've got. Some role models, some, would you say, mentors along the way? 
Do you feel like that's brought you to the point where you're sort of making content to sort of mentor people, whether it's through the gaming world or through making content or like, what do you think? Do, do you think mentorship is, is, is super important? A hundred percent. For like young creators and young artists, A hundred percent. And I'll tell you a story. It just happened to me two weeks ago. I'm at a screening and there's two young actors and who just booked something, booked something big and their the deadline thing is already out. And both of them ended up walking toward, they're both with their friend and they both ended up walking toward me at the same time. And I was by myself. And the conversation just naturally went to a space of them asking me questions. And it hit me at that moment that I was like, oh, I'm the OG. <laughs> oh, so oh, I can man. share. Oh, it was a, it was a mind blowing experience. But I love the fact that that they saw something that because they don't they're, they're not sure. This is their first run. They know things are about to change. How does this work? What should I do? And I was right. like, yo. So I just started giving them the game and talking about, hey, you know, I'm not telling you what you what you should do. I'm telling you what you could possibly do. You maybe right. want to try this. You should look into this. And uh, you know, for for instance, you know, one of them, you know, big big spotlight on them right now. I told them, I said, look. In this time, in this time you got right now, use right. that social media to your advantage because while the show is running, one season, two season, three seasons, as soon as those three or two are out, you're back looking for your next role. Right. That's how this goes. You don't right. write, don't think you're safe here. You're not. So in the midst of it all, please keep in mind that you need to figure out how to build your name with the jetpack they've given you. Mm. And he was like- I love like, the way you say it's a jetpack. Huh? Now, now I'll tell you this. Like, I've actually really kind of put myself out there to mentor um, uh, whoever. You know what I mean? Because, like, I think, like, over time I've realized that, like, there needs to be advocates for young talent and young actors. And there needs to be some safe places or at least there needs to be some... There's been talk from Allison Stoner to create modules. I mean, there, there's conversations mm -hmm. being had right now where like-minded people who just want safe spaces for young people are coming together. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's funny how, how certain energies get weeded out from the pack and I won't name names, but like they'll be the people that you know are there for the right reasons. And then they're, they're, there's other people that are part of the mentorship conversation that get weeded out because their traumas, okay, mm. are too great and too unresolved. Mm. And what they're looking to get from that experience is more self-validation than it is to give a piece of themselves to the future mm. of the art and the craft. Because sometimes, even if we're at the point where we're like, look, like we're putting the mic down or we're moving behind the camera or we're doing our own thing, we don't need to feel like we have to wait anymore and that's a whole different energy like we said that's empowering you know these young people it's scary to, to it's it's triggering in some ways to like see those kids i don't know i i feel like you had a really positive experience and i'm not saying i had a bad one but it it does tend to bring stuff up right like when you yeah. see them and you're like no 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 no, come to me so like yeah. what's been sometimes sad about stuff for me is when i offer m myself to some young people and they don't, and they don't choose to take me up on it. So it, 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 I have to remind myself, like, look, like this, I don't, there's no reason why they should come to me. There's no reason why they have to come to me. It's, yeah. a, it's my privilege to be able to give mentorship to somebody if they want to come to me. And right. so it's not about like, no, come to me because I know everything. Right. It's, it's also our privilege to be able to do that for people too. Absolutely, because you could you could choose you could absolutely choose to just be a closed off wall. Like, no, I'm I don't want nothing to do with what y'all got going over there. Good luck. You know, you could take that road. You could, but I, it's something about what we've experienced, what we've seen, that to be able to give back to the next generation so that they could operate properly, they could figure out the loopholes, they could figure out how to sidestep any walls coming, because that's all a part of our business. There's so many variables and so many factors. Well, and you know what else? Um when when you get caught up in the system of all of it and then you get the traumas along the way that that kind of distract you what you don't get from the influence that these kids are having even like i'd say a hundred times more than what we had um in the moments you know what i mean it's like they get it so fast and they're t like so for example if stand with ukraine is trending 
they're going to have to stand with Ukraine that week. Mm -hmm. But did they, did they, did they even know where Ukraine is on a map? Do they even know what's going on? Like, do they know the name of the president that's, you know, fighting beside everybody? Like they are not, they're given the platforms and they're so nervous not to stand for anything, Mm -hmm. but they can't stand for anything if they don't take the time to do it. So what I like about the kind of role of mentorship is that, especially from people like us, um, it could be helpful to kind of free them from the stress yeah. of pumping out content yeah. and, and still holding back a little bit and saying, okay, yes, my value is X. Yes, my influence is Y. But what do I really feel? And like, like how can I actually give back? You know, because if, if all we can do is mentor them not to like go be distracted. Right. What I, what I would hope they could have is like a genuine like perspective on the world that's positive mm-hmm. you know what i mean cuz yeah. let me tell you i don't think that the art form is changing anyone's minds on world peace like i don't i don't i, I don't know how you feel about it no i like, I, I it's it's a con- this the world has never been at peace that's the craziest part about all this the, the world has never been at peace there has always been some kind of conflict going on somewhere in the world but we as um, you know, as citizens, we're never aware of it until it's on blasted through our actual news outlets because it's affecting us. But there's the world has never been at peace. There's always something going on. Mm. And, you know, to speak to the to the younger generation with the social media platforms, with a billion eyeballs on them, I can understand how they're not sure how to operate in that world because brand A through brand Z is looking at me, looking at me to be just this guy or this girl. Oof. So it's a different, it's a different speed. It is, it is, it's yeah. a different speed. Yeah, and in some ways, it really hasn't changed. I mean, I wonder why did why did did you want to keep working like with Disney per se? Was that ever something that you thought maybe you would do from? Because like you came at it from the feature side with holes, yeah. but did you ever think? I mean, did you do any Disney Channel stuff? I don't. Think so you did. no. So my story is so funny because like when I when I hear Disney Kid, right, my ears perk up a little bit because I I feel yeah. like. Oh, I mean, I feel like, oh, I'm included in that? Because yeah. the reason I bring, bring say it like that is because before Holes, there was nothing on the Disney resume. Nothing uh, was on my resume that was Disney. Nothing. Mm. I came from doing uh, guest spots on TV shows. I did a film called Friday After Next with Ice Cube and Mike Epps. Yeah, a little film. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Holes hit. And uh, I, I, did a, I did a Disney Channel original movie after that called Going to the Mat. And, oh, there you go. Yeah. With Lauren. So those are the, right? those are the two, but I with also Maddie Lawrence. It, yes, of course, with the Lawrence. Yes, oh. the Lawrences, the Lawrence I brothers, the OGs. Him. I ain't seen I Andy. Him. I can't wait to run into run into. Yo, him. you need to. I can give you his number for real. I'm gonna give you his number because I, I would love to contact. He would love to work with you. <laughs> he would game with you. Oh, you got to You got to reach out to him. He's. I best. would love to reach out to Andy, man. Okay. Uh, okay. I had so I didn't even come in doing what I would think is is brand friendly for what Disney is. When gotcha. you do, you have holes short and you gotta think about what the character Zero was. He's choking uh-huh. people, he's hitting people with shovels, he's picking yeah. up uh, pool ball. <laughs> he was a little gangster in his own right. He was. Um, but then I did a film called uh, Badass, which was the story of Mario Van Peebles, uh, excuse me, Melvin Van Peebles being one of the first black independent film directors. And I played his son, Mario, and Mario in real life played his father, Melvin. And that was a very, telling ripping the curtain away of hollywood kind of film it was not Mm -hmm. it was not for the faint hearted it definitely wasn't friendly to that side Um, right after that i got a chance to do a film called walking tall with the rock which was Uh another different scale of like that's not within this space that's not within this space so i i never considered myself a disney kid because i only had those two but i have all i've been i was a disney fan before anything till this day i am a disney head like i love disneyland i love disney world i love no, marvel is, i love star wars i'm a crazy? disney kid so you and me are disney adults that's what they call us we're disney and they adults. don't okay uh, yeah we're called disney adults and it and it's tre- it, it's a whole trend it's at least on my fyp i'm surprised if it's not yours because I love Disneyland, Disney World. I love the festivals. I love when there's like, I just love every, you know that you can, look at this. Yeah, I can't, I don't even want to start. But like for real, 
Like, look, I got, I got this right. I got my girl here. Okay. Got, okay. There it is. Wait, Represent. Because it's us. It's in our blood. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. But <laughs> Come I, on, I, yeah, I need that. I need that. I need that on my, my There's mantle. There's some limited edition. That. I've got some stuff. My mom, you know, she was such a hoarder or is, I mean, is such a hoarder, but she saved a lot of stuff. And she told me, she's like, one of these days, you're going to be Shout happy. out to moms. They were right. I'm telling you, they were right. My mom's got everything. That's awesome. So yeah. So like, what's your family life like? You have siblings? I never yes. really, let's get to know each other. Yeah. I'm the oldest of my siblings. I have two little brothers and one little sister. Um, okay. none of them followed the steps of being like their big brother. None of them wanted to be in front of the camera or anything like that. Uh, my, my brother Kadeem has been a tech genius our entire lives. Uh, he's running now production on a lot of virtual shows. So I'm very happy and excited for him for that. Uh, That's the cool. yeah, the baby brother is, uh, getting more into music, but also into production as well. Okay. So I love the vex. So like now when I'm shooting stuff, I got someone to offload, like you said, keep it within the family. So I yes. can just offload the content I've shot, boom, boom, boom. It's back to me in 30 minutes and it's done. Um, there you go. and then no my attitudes. baby sister, yeah, my baby sister is an artist. I have some of her paintings in my house and, uh, she's putting out a comic book coming up this year. So she's, she's, she's amazing. See, so, but I think it's like. We're all so consumed with branding. And, and by the way, it's a beautiful thing. Like it's a whole marketplace. It's a whole economy um, to be able to, to, to utilize. You know what I mean? Like it's wonderful. I don't know how great the concept of like the capitalism and like the whole political side of all this like free market crazy sponsorship stuff is and where it's going to end up. Yeah, because it's 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 macro influencers, it's micro influencers. It's on every single level is the hype, the hustle, the brand, the grind of constantly putting out content mm -hmm. constantly. You know what I mean? And in some ways, it's like all of us are concerned with branding. All of us on some level is concerned with being Insta famous. Mm -hmm. We're curating every picture that we take with our with anybody that we take a picture with mm -hmm. because we want it to look good. Right. Versus like when you think about like when I look at pictures, even with Shia, I have a picture with Shia when we went to Universal Studios, when we were like, we just shot the pilot or I think we just, I just moved to LA and they were like whining and dining us and like they sent us to like Universal. And he was like flipping the bird like to like the Universal sign because we were like Disney kids. And like, I have all these like crazy outtake pictures, <laughs> but like you would never take pictures like that. You know, like there's so many things you see that what's even crazier is that people are trying to capture that aesthetic now. Like they're trying to buy those photos, uh, those cameras, those instant cameras. Yep. They're trying to capture the essence yeah. of authenticity, not even true authenticity, but they're like performative yeah. authenticity of yeah. like the nineties and two thousands, which is, which is crazy, which is crazy. <laughs> But what I was trying to say, I guess, in a roundabout way, because that's who I am. <laughs> and I love that you're cool with that. Yes. So thank you, Cleo. It makes me really, really, really love talking to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that, you know, you've got your, you've got your, your whole siblings. Like, I gotta, I gotta assume that they, they were supportive of you, because sometimes it doesn't work out like that. And sometimes yeah. being a young actor can kind of put a wedge in your, in your family dynamic. Yeah, I got lucky. I got lucky. I got really lucky because I got a chance to see several, uh, you know, child actors and what comes with that, and yeah. an empowerment level of like I'm, I'm paying the bills, blah blah blah. Yeah. Listen, listen, man. I it's got, hard to watch that. It, by oh, the way. I knew not to try it. I wasn't even going in that direction. Like, <laughs> like my, you know, pops military life. You know what I mean? It's yes sir, no yeah. sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. I was raised that way. I was in. Like, yeah. That's there no matter what. But I wouldn't, yes. I wouldn't like, I wasn't stressing my dad. I was stressing my mom. If my mom went left on me, I knew I was, I knew I was going to go like, no, I'm not disappointing moms. <laughs> my mom's was the one who was like the authority figure for me. And she yeah. did a great, but what I love about my parents and I'll always give them the credit for this is they didn't lie to me. They didn't, they didn't, uh, um, they didn't cover anything up. They said, look, this life that you were used to is about to change. So here's what we're going to do. Just know that the stakes are higher now. They kept mm -hmm. it all the way 100 with me. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm grateful for the fact that 
I look at some other actors, even people right now who moved to Los Angeles to chase a dream. My family has been here. My foundation has always been with me. Every step of the way, every film I've done, my family was with me. I did Walking Tall in Vancouver. It was summer vacation. The whole family's up there. When I did going, uh, when I did going to the mat in Utah, the family came wow. out. It's my little brother's first time seeing snow. Like it was, it was that aspect for us. And my parents did such a great job of ha- handling both their son who was in the in, a, in the business, and then the ch- the rest of their children who were. Uh, still regular kids who, you know, right. one brother had football practice. The other brother had basketball practice. The other, right. my baby sister got to do ballet and dance. They handled it all. For real. So I tip my hat to my parents, man. For real. Like, you're not just telling me this and I want to believe that this is true. This is all true. This is, it's the reason why I am the way I am today, which I think if we're going to keep it a buck, if we're going to keep it a buck, love, I think it. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a double-sided sword. I feel because I didn't run the TMZ crash and burn Cleo Thomas uh-huh. child actor turn this route that my name yeah. just disappeared off the map to people. But the pro- I was never I moving like I Do you know. know how bad I wanted to pose in a bikini and get like and get, and get like I was the ultimate feminist like girl power like icon right like growing up Kim Possible Ren right. Stevens, like all that stuff and all I wanted to do was degrade myself. So that I could stay relevant because we didn't have social media to control the narrative in in that way and keep your name out there. Yeah. It was that intense. Yes. Where you had to make that choice. Um, and, and thank God for your, your, your family to be around you like that, man. Thank God that they didn't feel like they needed to take that star shine from you, but that you could all be together as one enjoying that yeah. and not exploiting it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, they that's did a amazing, good job. Cleo. That's uh, that's yeah. my journey. I know it's different for everyone else. Like I know I've I've heard horror stories. I know how it is. We've seen it. We've seen it. Yeah, everyone that came before us, yeah. we see yeah. it, those traumas still being shown today in their yeah. eyes. We know that. So I, I I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you need to call your mom after this interview. You're gonna be like, you know what? I, I need called to her right before I got on. on. I called, talked to her right before I got talked to you. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, tell her I said hi, and I yes. think she's awesome. Yes, of course. That's really cool. All right, so where are we at now with your journey? Where do you feel like we've we've kind of come to? Man, um, we're in a. I'm in a very great place, place creatively. Um, yeah, but like we didn't start talking about your gaming yeah. and like and like yes, YouTube. You saw Soldier Boy, and yes, like like we talked about you going independent, but we didn't talk about the gaming, and we didn't talk about you leaving. The, the I guess not performing right now. You're oh, performing music. Okay, so we, yeah, we, yeah. So music wise, we'll start there. Like, yeah, as soon as I got that feeling that I thought I needed, as far as trying to replicate what I felt on Scream Tour, I was good, and I okay. knew as it, the business of music slowly but surely started draining me to the point where I wasn't having any fun anymore. It was not okay. fun. I every person I talked to, the politicking of it, the gatekeeping, the back shadows of a hey, so-and-so you can't sign it and you see it now more than ever and i was again I, I i tell everybody this i was two years too early i was running my business as a, as a musician as an as an artist like an independent like an independent guy mm-hmm. it took two years later for the music industry as a whole to reconfigure and accept someone like me and then mm-hmm. give them the door open okay you get it you understand your demographic boom we're just gonna put the jet pack on you and let you do your thing Mm-hmm. It wasn't was like it, that. Who was it that did that in the game? Like, who was it that? Because I, I, I'm not saying it wasn't Kanye, obviously, but like, I, at least for me, I felt like Kanye was Kanye was independent, right? No, Kanye was uh, Kanye was Def Jam. Kanye was Def Jam. Okay, so forget my ignorance on that. But who, who is who was it that you felt like did that then? In the uh, from my run, from my era, I feel like there was an artist like Kid Ink. There was artists like um, who had a very big mixtape buzz at that time that kind of just just ran the race. I mean, the Drake thing was different. That, like that's, that's an unfair one because Drake was just different. When he hit, it was like everyone knew. Everybody knew. Like even on the outside of me, I knew he was out of here. Um, so it, it was a few artists in that time who had their runs, but I don't I don't see those those guys still. Elizabeth, Sorry, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Hello, saying, Elizabeth. Eliz- Elizabeth saying she goes Chance the Rapper and Lil Nas X. But those were not in those two years he's no, talking about. No, but, Chan- but it's funny because Chance now is doing exactly what I just said. Like Chance's yeah. whole thing. With- well, they say he was independent, but I'm like, no independent artist getting on a late night talk show to perform a single, bro. That don't, that don't, that's not how that works <laughs> because I know the game. But Right. Now, mixtapes, too. Like, 
that's what are mixtapes about? I like I grew up I, I grew up, okay. I'm Italian, I'm from the East Coast, and believe it or not, even though I grew up in Connecticut, I grew up in the more Italian sort of like sort of like middle class, like, you know, working people. And mm -hmm. we loved our house music. We loved our freestyle dance music. We loved, we loved Hot 97. We loved reggaeton. We loved a ballroom. Like yes. it was a really eclectic, interesting area. Cause we were a melting pot in the tri-state area. Cause I was just as close to New Haven mm -hmm. as a, in Bridgeport as I was to like Fairfield and Westport. So like I was in this really interesting, like, kid to have hip hop hit the suburbs yeah. at the time that it did because it was really hitting and in 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 all the different ways not just you know the 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 top 5 ones right. but I was listening I grew up listening to Hot 97 so I was aware of what mixtapes were wow. but I never really understood that mixtapes were a way to launch independent artists yeah so that's cool I mean it was, a way, to, it was are, a way just to build a buzz for yourself you know like you we would find music just from the radio and MTV mm -hmm. and BET. That's the only way you knew of a new artist really coming out. Yeah. The internet changed all that. With LimeWire, with SoundCloud, with YouTube, you could now put your song out at any time. And don't have to, and you hear artists right now complaining about the label's not letting me drop my album, the label's not letting me drop my single. Like, that's still happening now. That's been happening mm -hmm. for years though. And you know, it, again, it's, it was a way to just to build your buzz and get people to talk about you as an artist. You could, and back in the day, you could go online and find instrumentals for like the most popping songs, like the top mm -hmm. five records. You pull an instrumental, recreate it your own way, and now people are listening right. to your version of that mm -hmm. song to the point where it actually happened to me that I actually, without knowing, helped blow up a Bay Area artist, and then he was out of here. And I was like, when they looked at the numbers, they were like, well, "Where, where did the traction come from?" Oh, it was click. <laughs> it was me it was me <laughs> but yeah careful man. people are gonna say that you think that katy perry took your record deal man right stop let them have it bro y'all have it y'all got it man y'all got it all right so then what you just decided at one point you're like the game is done for me like you said yeah you had the moment yeah was it like a moment in your mind that you heard that the calling was there was there a voice in your head that was just like you're good you're good. That's exactly what it was. And I and I, I slowly but surely started getting into a place where I knew I would start interacting differently with the world. I knew it was going to change the dynamic of how I spoke to people, how I talked to people, because wow. I had led this entire time with being who I am. I'm leading. I'm coming as, as very humble into this room. I appreciate you having me here. Appreciate you having me here. And then it hit me. I'm like, oh, they want me to be the other guy. You would prefer me to be the arrogant guy just because I'm coming in here with all of these accolades already. I'm not the newer artist to you. I am the guy who did all these films and all that. So you want me to come in here like this. But no, I almost like you have to be that. I was gonna... they wanted they like I could feel that that's the if I would have walked in with that kind of energy, I kid you not, it'd have been a different game. But I wow. I know what also comes with that. Me walking in very arrogantly, especially within a rap world. That's not something I want to be looking over my shoulder with every day. I'm exactly. cool. Exactly. Y'all can have exactly. it. Enjoy it. I'm out. You gotta, you gotta figure that gets a lot of young people in trouble in 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 that in that world, like yeah. in the music world, because like they're just well intentioned and they're doing exactly what you're saying. It's for the art, and and people use their brand against them in a way. Yes. Because it sells records. It sells records, and Dude, I wasn't I wasn't up. rapping about. You know, a lifestyle I didn't live. I didn't grow up gangbanging yeah. and guns. And yeah. I didn't. Go, no, it was none of that. I was making music yeah. that I loved. I was the ladies like me. I'm making music for them. <laughs> but it's because of the. But no matter what, that attention's <laughs> coming my way because he's, he's this. There's a jealousy factor of it. Like, oh, he think he's special because he. Do Nah, I'm not about to play this game with y'all, bro. Y'all got it. Yeah. Let me just, I put it wow. down. I got what I needed. I got what I wanted out of it. I, it helped me launch my, it helped me launch Slick Living because Slick Living was originally just my merch brand. And I was able okay. to upgrade it from there, create it to a full clothing brand, which helped, you know, launch Glam, Goddess Living Amongst Men. So everything I wanted to get out of music, I got. The world can have So do you, now wait a minute. So, so let's talk about where you're at now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Man, just so many questions. You're so interesting. <laughs> So you, I've, I've read on my notes, cause you know, I'm so prepared that gaming was always there for you. Always. It was always around. Yes. So, but right after that, did you say now I'm going to 
now I'm going to go into gaming? Like, how did that happen? No, it was a very big break between me doing music and me really finding the platform like Twitch for gaming. But gaming has, I, I've been a gamer my entire, every film I've ever been on, there's been a video game right there with me. I can tell yeah. you during Holes, I was playing Final Fantasy VII in Castlevania. <laughs> during Walking Tall, I was playing Final Fantasy X. During Remember the Days, I was playing Kingdom Hearts 2 and Fight Night. You know I'm Yuffie, right? Yes, I know you're Yuffie. To believe me, I know. I wanted to bring it up later. Hold on. <laughs> All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. Nice. All I'm saying is this. You're that guy. There I'm he goes. He puts it. You, okay. He's got the Kingdom Hearts sword. <laughs> He's got it. And yes. it's is that real It's huge. Yes, it is. It's, it's huge. Quite, yeah, it's, it's a little too much I in the face. I shouldn't but, get um, too excited about that. Gaming has always been been there, and uh, right before the pandemic hit, I was sitting down with a network to have my very own late night talk show. I felt like we didn't have an Arsenio Hall of our generation, and I uh -huh. wanted to bring back that feeling. So I pitched the idea, the network loved it, we're getting ready to shoot the pilot, second week of April 2020, pandemic, gone. Strict. Stop it! So Are you happened. serious? Yes. Oh. So, uh, they called me about a week later, knowing that da 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 da, and I said, they, they, they wanted to change it virtual. They wanted to ch take it to a virtual space. But in my mind, yeah. when I pictured my show, especially, you know, Arsenio Hall kind of vibe, yeah. I needed the live studio audience. Like, that you was a big that. part of it. So instead of, of launching uh, with the network, I chose to sit down for the first two months of the pandemic, and I studied Twitch. I studied it. I, I literally have a notebook still, and I just watched it because this is a platform that had been here this entire time. But no one's been able to explain to me how it worked every time I asked about it. So I studied it. I studied all the big streamers, the little streamers. I watched YouTube videos. And then in those two months, I led up to an actual launch date for my channel on Twitch. And everything was perfected. I didn't launch just like, oh, we're just testing. No, I had the alerts ready. I had the bits ready. I had the banners ready. I had the layers. I bought myself a stream deck to be able to switch the transition. So it's my show. Everything that it was going to be for, uh, so for my talk show. I yeah. controlled everything from here. So uh, I turned my Twitch channel not only into the offshoot of the uh, Arsenio Hall type vibe talk show, but also because yeah. it is a gaming platform, I'm going to play video games too. So it's been a great uh, crossroads for everything that I love. That's so exciting. So obviously people can see your you and I guess your show then yes. on Twitch. On Twitch. Twitch. It, TV so it's Thomas. just, it's, sorry, you said it's the Cleo Thomas channel? Uh, just twitch.tv slash Cleo Thomas. Yep. Okay, so it's the Cleo Thomas, but you're not you're not branding it the Cleo Thomas show. It's just who you are as a mm -hmm. as a brand and as an as sort of um, a personality, yeah. so to speak. For sure, and it's helped yeah. me sharpen my tools so much that you know when the time comes and we can't sit back and have that conversation again with a network to have that late night talk show of a young black man, the Arsenio Hall kind of vibe of this. My my tools have been sharpened due to me killing it on Twitch for three years, and I, I was I'm very grateful for the platform because they saw. I was doing something different. So they reached out to me and we've had a great partnership. We've done some really great things and I'm actually getting ready to partner with them again uh, very soon with Pizza Hut. So I'm really excited for that. What? That's huge. Okay, so now we're at the point where you can actually tell me what you've got going on. That sounds amazing. We got the Pizza Hut and Twitch collaboration. Yeah, so I'm working, uh, I'm working with Pizza Hut on something really special. I'm a big Apex Legends fan. It's a video game. It's a, uh, a battle royale multiplayer uh -huh. game. So I'll, I'll be doing a whole tournament with Pizza uh -huh. Hut live on the Twitch front page. Uh, I'm partnering with Puma to do something really special as well. Puma and Rope. Puma, I'm not going to say the other one yet because it's <laughs> uh, Puma, the, you know, I'm the face of uh, Astro Gaming headsets as well. You know, I got that, the opportunity to be the face of the Astro IDs for this year. So I have my own collection over there. And um, yeah, man, that's that. And that's, that's, that's where we're at. And I'm working None of that could have happened. Yeah. Oh, for, I, I, two, two takeaways from this. You listened to your, I don't know if you want to call it your higher power but you listened and you know you knew that when you were in front of that many eyeballs granted they were in person mm -hmm. but there was something to you that came alive in being sort of like a focal point on a stage and mm -hmm. and that to you was where you wanted to go yeah and you've come back to that but on your own terms which honestly Cleo that's that's amazing i feel like you are so inspirational Thank for you. me because you kind of made me reflect today about being a little bit jaded. And everybody likes to think that I'm like, you know, I'm centered, like I'm, you know, I've got it all together, but I'll be the first to tell you that I'm definitely, I'm definitely still dealing with stuff, you know? Yes. 
We all are. But it's it's really great to see how you how you've come full circle like this. Yeah. And 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 it, it's uh, I'm really really proud of you. I'm proud of you, Cleo. <laughs> that means a lot, especially coming from you, man. And don't feel oh, don't man. feel any type of way about your jadedness, man. People will never understand. They'll never understand. You got to think about it like this. How many people would chase their dream 365 days in a year, be told no, and then chase it again the next 365? Every day to get a new opportunity, right? Me and you, we had a new opportunity almost every day to chase our dream. And we were told no, we kept going, and then we got it. And guess what? The business doesn't always come back and give it to you over and over again. But yet, mm -hmm. what do we do? We stuck it out. We grinded. They're not built like us. You, how many people would fold like origami? They would fold like a tanning chair. Like, like fresh laundry, they would fold. But yet, we did it. So take pride Thank in that. Be jaded by it. Embrace that. Oh, Cleo, you are my ultimate hype person. And I love you for that. And love. I can't wait to see you in person yes. to get that chain from this you. This is coming to you, man. This is coming. Oh, this man. is all yours, my man, kids, of course. But by the way, Cleo, my kids are going to love that. So I've got to hide it from my kids because <laughs> they're going to want to wear it and bring it to school. And they're going to be like, they gonna be like your daughter's. Yes, my girls, my girls. Oh, man. <laughs> and now, where are you at? Like, are you, do you think you want kids? If you had kids, do you think you'd put them in the business? Like, how do you feel about that? Ooh, um, I, 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 I want kids. I just want to yeah. be with the right person. You know, I found myself in a very, it's like when, when as, a, as a man in this business, that spotlight coming, that attention is coming. No matter what I do, I could hide from it, but it's coming. There's nothing that's going to change that. And I know that that's a big pressure and weight to put on any woman who would choose to deal with me. Okay. But I can't, I know I can't take away the things that make me very confident in myself just to make this okay. So it's a very, yeah. it's, it's, what's, what's, I have an issue with words that start with a C in relationships. I realized that um, about two years commitment? ago. Uh, no, it's, it's commitment. There's another one. What's the compromise? Commitment oh, okay. 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 So, but <laughs> communication. Really communicate. No, I can communicate quite well, but it's, okay. it's, it's the compromise. What, what's funny? I'll get back to it. Is like the word it's, compromise. Literally, it literally was never in my vocabulary. The okay. word compromise, because I don't, I don't, I never knew how. Because everything I've ever wanted, I went and I got and I made it happen. So the mm -hmm. word compromise and just getting this instead of no, I never. And, and that's separate from relationships. You know what I mean? So I right. didn't even know the word compromise. Um, mm. So yeah, you know, hopefully one day, you know, I meet the right woman. We can settle down. We can figure it out, and I can have me a little, little, little child running around here. That's cool with me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as far as putting them in the business or the industry, man, um, you know, it's something that I, I would want to protect them no matter what. I'm gonna protect them no matter what, and I think that's every parent. You're protecting my parents. Protected me. Like, that's what it is. How you're going to treat your two daughters, you're protecting your babies. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like because of the new space that we're in, especially with entertainment, especially with the social media game, we can have way more control than what was out there before in our run. Yes. I could, if, if, if you know, my baby want to be the head on YouTube, guess what? We shooting that from here. The mm -hmm. deals come through this email. Mm -hmm. The negotiating coming here. Ain't nobody speaking for nobody. We got this because we can do exactly. that now. It wasn't like that before. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. Good. Well, yeah. thank you. And honestly, Cleo, it's been it's been a joy to, to chat and to catch up. And I am sad that we didn't get to see you in person. But we'll. This is not the end. I think. I think you and I, we could do things. I think we could like co-host things. Like I don't know, guys. What do you think? I think Cleo's amazing, and he needs his own show. Let's do but, it. Let's do I'll, it. I'll be I'll be right by your side if you ever need a KP waiting in the wings. I'll be here for you. I Let's do it. I don't need that. Maybe you know what? And maybe you could maybe you could teach me how to twitch. It's not hard. You're doing it now. You're doing it talking <laughs> to me. Come on. Okay. You play, what video game did you grow up playing? Did you play a Pac Man? Did you play Galaga? I played. Nah, man. I played Game Boy. Like I like the little Game Boy thing. Like I I have to still learn how to play. Um, like really bigger ones and and actually my husband's really great at that stuff so but I think I could learn and if I do learn or if you ever need me I will try Listen, I will try for you you do it and I can I can build it all up all out right now for you got the Kim possible animation that comes up and she kicks and then the name comes up so and so just followed every time someone subscribes to your channel Ron will pull up that's all there but that's all a part of the aesthetic of what your channel 
is and what people are there to see for you. Okay, we might have to talk off well, offline about that. We're that gonna sounds talk about awesome. It. Thank you, Cleo Thomas. We love you, um, uh, and we are excited to see what's what's coming up with you. Well, but where can we find you, etc.? Uh, Cleo Thomas across the board. Make sure everything is streamlined. Like, I, I, it's funny that I have to tell people that as far as like yeah. getting into the industry, the business, and they're trying to create a name for themselves. They have like four different names on all social medias. So I'm just like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? At yeah. Cleo Thomas across the board. It took me a long time to get my TikTok one, but I got finally got it. So at Good. Cleo Thomas. <laughs> and it's worth it. It's worth to, to brand yourself and get your name the same on every single one. So that's you, Cleo Thomas, everywhere. YouTube. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Okay. YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, where I DM you frequently, and uh, Twitter, TikTok. Twitter, TikTok. It's all there. Awesome. Well, we love you, Cleo. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Today. Peace. <laughs>